Hello everyone, I'm Vibhor Singh and today we'll be discussing the 11th problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated parameter. So as you can see this is the CP31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected and this is the 11th problem. <coughs> White black balance subtrees. So you are given a rooted tree consisting of n vertices numbered from 1 to n. The root is vertex 1. There is also a string s denoting the color of each vertex. If s of i equal to b, the vertex i is black and if s of i equal to w, the vertex i is white. A subtree of the tree is called balance if the number of white vertices equals the number of black vertices. Count the number of balanced subtrees. So, and then there's information about the tree. So let's try to understand what the problem is. Let's take this example that is this first example, let's just take it there. So I've already written down the example and drawn the tree. So you're given, first of all, you're given n, that is the number of nodes in your tree. Then you're given for each node starting from the second node. So the tree you're given that the tree would be rooted from rooted at node number one. So node number one is the root. After that, starting from the second node, you're given the parent of each node. So the second node's parent is 1. So that is why there's a connection from 1 to 2. And all these connections like the root is 1. So this is a child, 3 is a child, so on and so forth. Then again for, so this is for 2. Then for 3, again, the uh, parent for 3 is 1. Then the parent for 4 is 2. Then the parent for 5 is 3. Parent for 6 is 3. And then the parent for 7 is 5. So this is how the tree is constructed. And after that, you're given a string. So like S of 0 says that what would be the color of the first vertex that is if it's w it will be white so like a first one is w which is white second one is black third is black fourth is white fifth is white sixth is black and then seventh is white okay now what do we have to do so like this is the tree that is given to you now what do we have to do out of this tree to solve the problem basically we have to calculate number of subtrees which have number of white equal to number of black Okay, so basically how do we say it? Let's say, um, let's look at one one subtree at a time. So let's say the first subtree starting at node or starting at vertex 4. So that will be only this one vertex, right? In which the number of white would be 1 and the number of black would be 0, which are not equal, right? So this is not a balanced subtree, which is this subtree starting at vertex 4 or a uh, subtree considering vertex 4 as the root. Then if I consider vertex 2 as the root, then the subtree will become this entire part where the number of white nodes would be 1 and number of black nodes would be 1, right? A number of white and black vertices would be equal. So 2 is a balanced subtree, okay? So 2 is a balanced subtree. Let's just write the balanced subtrees. So having uh, 2 as the root, we'll get a balanced subtree. Then if I look at 7 alone, number of white would be 1, number of black would be 0. So it is not a balanced subtree. Then if I look at this subtree with 5 as the root, again number of white would be 2, number of black would be 0. So it is not a balanced subtree. If I look at 6 alone, it has 1 black node, 0 white. So again, it's not balanced. If I look this at this subtree with 3 as the root, if I look at this entire subtree, number of white over here are 2, right? Number of white nodes are 2 or white vertices, number of black vertices are also 2. So number of white is equal to the number of black. In this subtree. So I can write that having three node number uh, no, vertex number three as the root that is also a balanced subtree overall right and if I look at this entire tree as a whole number of white nodes is one two three four and number of black nodes is one two three so again it's not a balanced subtree so totally you have two balanced subtrees one having root as two that is the subtree having root as two and one is the subtree having root as three so we just have to print the count of this uh, number of balance subtrees that is the total count will become 2 in our case so as you can see the output for this example is 2 that is we have two balance subtrees for this example so that's it i hope you're able to understand the problem let's move on to the expected time complexity discussion so you're given number of test cases go till 10 days to 4 n goes till uh, 4000 then each number that is like the parent can only go till n that is till 4000 and then 
it is guaranteed that the sum of n over all test cases does not exceed 2 into 10 to 5. Okay, so we know one second in code forces approximately allows us 10 days to 8 operations, right? Now you are given that n goes till maximum 2 into 10 to 5, that is sum of n overall, right? Sum of n will go till 2 into 10 to 5. I can ignore the component of number of test cases t, right? So with this information, I know I can form any solution with the sort of order of n or order of n log n. But if I go to any higher complexity such as order of, order of n square or order of n cube, this will give us TLE. So this is the line that anything of the for order of n or n log n will work. But if we go to higher orders like n square, we will get TLE. So that's it for the expected time complexity discussion. Now let's try to see how we can solve the problem. So one way to solve the problem would be, see, the idea to solve the problem is very direct, right? It's very intuitive. You have the, for each subtree, you have to count the number of white and number of black nodes, right? So let's just make a sample tree. So let's say I'm at this vertex currently. So for all its children, including itself, it will form the subtree. For this subtree, I want to count the number of white uh, vertices, number of and the number of black vertices, and I want to see whether they are equal, right? So one thing that we can do is we can represent, let's say, white as plus one, black as minus one. So if a vertex is white, I would say it adds plus one to our subtree, and if a vertex is black it adds minus one to our subtree. Okay. So for our subtree to be balanced, for an overall subtree to be balanced, we need our sum of values to be zero, right? That is if white is giving us plus one, black is giving us minus one. So the sum of vertices or the sum of values given by the vertices of that subtree should be zero, right? So this is a, like a very intuitive way that we can boil down the problem to by representing white as plus one, black as minus one and saying that sum should be zero. So after this, what once we have this information, we can use basic DFS. We can use basic DFS. And in our DFS, if our current node is white, we will add plus one to the current count of the subtree. Else we'll add minus one to the current count. If it's black, we'll add minus one to the current count of the subtree. And we'll propagate this count upwards in our tree. Okay, so we'll propagate the count upwards in our tree. And finally, Whichever node has count zero for which, for that we increment the answer. Okay. So like if I have something like this, like let's say I'm looking at this subtree. If I'm looking at this subtree and let's say I have over here a white node, I have over here a black node, white and black. Okay. This is one, this is two, this is three and this is four. Okay. Let's say we have this thing, this tree. So what we'll do is we'll run DFS. So how will DFS run naturally? First thing it is, it will visit is, it will come to this node, right? So from here, from one, it will first come to two, right? And when it comes to two, so let's say we are at two right now, we'll get, we have gotten one white node, our overall count or the sum or the count of our subtree, the sum of our subtree would be plus one since we have taken white as plus one, right? Then we'll move back up and then we'll continue our DFS downwards again. So we had something like we are doing like a post of a post order DFS, something similar to that, right? That is we'll compute for each node after all its children. Okay. So first I computed for this child, then I'll compute for the next child, right? For three. Now again for three, I'll need to compute for its children, for three's children. So I'll first compute for four. So next thing I'll do is I'll be at four, right? So at four, we are at, we have one black node and our count will be or our sum would become minus one, right? Since we have only one black node right now. See, like till now it's very straightforward. That is, we just saw the leaf nodes and these are independent counts. So at two, we had plus one at four, we had minus one. So from four, we will return minus one, right? And similarly from two, we will be returning plus one. Okay. So I won't just uh, clog up the graph for now. So. Next thing will come at node number three. So at node three, we are getting a minus one from four, right? We are getting a minus one from four and at three itself, we'll get a plus one. So our overall sum at three will become zero. 
that is how our dfs is running right see at 4 we got minus 1 from which we will return minus 1 what do we have to take we have to take sum of all children plus value of current node right so sum of all children was minus 1 plus the current value was plus 1 so our count begins zero so i'll we'll increment our answer our answer would be one currently by now or we'll increment our answer by one this is one of the nodes right so let's just keep that in mind then moving forward finally at one we'll calculate from two i'll get a plus one and from here i'll get a zero right at three i got a zero so from here i'll get a zero so sum of children will become plus one and at the node itself i have a black node which is minus one right so sum of children is plus 1 and then the black node will give minus 1 so add 1 also our value will become zero our overall sum or overall count will become zero so from this entire sub this tree example tree i got the answer as 2 so for this thing my answer will become 2 so i hope this how the working of the dfs is clear first we'll calculate for each node the Contribution given by its children. So the DFS will keep going down till the bottommost node, and then it will propagate upwards to kind give the count or sum of the values or the count of the children, right? The sum of the values of the children, and then at the current node we'll add its current value, and then we'll check if that value is zero at the current node, then we'll increment our answer. So let's try to understand this with the code now, and how we'll implement this. So this is the DFS function. I'll come to this when. Later on in the code, let's just start with the initial taking number of test cases input and then taking n as input. Uh, note that I've taken answer as a global variable. I've taken answer as a global variable, and that is why for each test case, I'm uh, initializing answer to zero again and again. There could be many ways to implement this. I have implemented this with a global variable. You can use local variables. You can use a DP. You can use many ways, but uh, I have used this implementation since it's. a much simpler way i'll just create a global variable and for that i need to keep in mind that i need to initialize the global variable for every test case because it is independent if i don't initialize it the values of the previous test case can affect the next test case so then i'm taking n as input and then i'm creating the existence uh, existence matrix which is like not exactly an existence matrix basically for each node i'm storing its children okay so what is the information given to us we are given that for a node what its parent would be right that is for node number 2 we have parent as 1 then node number 3 we have parent as 1 so on and so forth so what i'm doing is i'm i'm inputting the current parent that is tem and then in the parent i'm pushing back the node now why am i doing i plus 2 see i started i from 0 and as we can see the first value that we are getting is for is the parent of node number 2 that is why i'm doing i plus 2 the second value that i'm getting is the parent for node number 3 and my i value will be 1 at that time so that is why like we'll be pushing back i plus 2 so i plus 2 is the child and temp is the parent that is given to us and this is all one based indexing so that's how i'm creating the existence matrix and also i've taken the size as n plus 1 since we are doing one uh, one based indexing in the existence matrix and then i've taken the string s as input which is the values that is white or black for each node and i've run the dfs function and then i've printed the answer now how am i calculating the answer in the dfs function so it is we are taking the node the existence matrix and the string as the input for the dfs function right node is the current node we are at existence matrix gives us the uh, children of our current node and string gives us the value of our current node that is whether it's a black vertex or a white vertex okay then the base condition would be that if our current node Uh, is a child node. Uh, sorry, it's a leaf node. Then we can just return one or minus one, right? That is, if the size of uh, its children. So, existence matrix is given the children, right? It's the size. It has. It stores the children for each node. So, if it does not have any children, that is the size is zero. That means uh, we have. Uh, it's a leaf node. So, we have a leaf node. That is why we can directly return one if it's white. Else, we'll return minus one, right? And then I'm maintaining the count. So for all children, I'm adding whatever value they return through the DFS to the count, and then in the end, after getting all the values for each of the children, I'm adding the value for our current node. So the value for the current node again, if it's white, we'll add one; else, we'll add minus one. And then if the count is zero, we'll be incrementing our answer. And since answer is a global variable, we can directly increment our answer like this. 
and then we'll return count for the parent, right? So this count will be returned. It will go to the parent. It will be used by the parent to compute its like the parent's overall uh, sum or overall count. So this is how we are doing implementing our DFS. And then in the end, we are just printing the answer. So that's it for the uh, solution discussion. I hope it is clear. Now we can move to the space and time complexity discussion. So first of all, taking input will be of the order of n itself over here. Then after that, the running of the DFS. See, in our DFS, we will be visiting each and every node only once, right? We'll run our DFS. Since it's a tree, we don't need to maintain anything of a visited array or any such thing. It's a simple tree. We'll be visiting from the parent, we'll be visiting the child, but not vice versa, right? We'll only back propagate, but we'll not visit it again. We'll not visit any node twice. So that is why the overall time complexity of running the DFS is also order of n. So the overall time complexity just becomes order of n, or like you can say order of sum of n overall test cases. And for space complexity we have, so our existency matrix will have overall n values only, right? Rather n minus one values, right? Why? Because for each node, we are store, storing its children only, right? So overall, since it's a tree, we cannot have any cycles or total number of values we'll be storing will, will be of order of n only. Then uh, another space that would be, we'll be using would be the recursive stack of the DFS, which will again maximum go to order of n since our DFS can run maximum order of n times. So, that is why our overall space complexity will also be order of n. So I hope the overall solution is clear to you. Thank you.